The Colorado Plateau of Western North America is a red rock wonderland of strange formations and canyons carved down into its sandstone. These innumerable labyrinths are often watery retreats from the exposed rocky desert at the top of the plateau. It is here the canyon wren lives and nests. It easily scales the vertical rock walls and probes for insects hiding in the cracks. In larger crevices, it builds its tiny cup nests to hold its own eggs, safely wedged somewhere high on a cliff face where nearly no predators can reach. Wrens, or more correctly, the family Troglodytidae, are distributed quite widely. A single species is found in the Old World, all the way from the Far East in Russia and Japan, through the Himalayas and the Middle East, all the way to Western Europe and North Africa. Wrens, though, are really a New World group of birds, and most diverse in the Neotropics, where many species can be seen, or more likely heard, in the tangled forests. This particularly weird clucking sound is the song of the song wren. Wrens are some of the sweetest looking and singing birds in the world, but despite this, they do some very bold and devious things to make sure nothing messes with their nests. Some, like the canyon wren, use geology to protect their eggs, putting their progeny somewhere few animals can reach. Others, like the house wren, have a dark side participating in what is essentially sabotage to remove competition, filling the cup nests of other birds with sticks to make them unusable, or even destroying eggs inside nests they find inside their territory. Other wrens focus on a strong defense, and several species team up with other organisms to make it very unpleasant to try to get eggs from their nests. In the dry forests of Costa Rica's northwestern Pacific coast, lives a wren who is a particularly nasty way to keep predators away. Meet the rufous-backed wren. It constructs its woven nest among the spindly branches of an acacia tree. This might not seem the smartest move until you notice the tiny ants that scamper all over the shrub. The acacia provides the perfect home for these pseudomimrix ants. The tree's hollow thorns are used as nests, and it provides sugar and protein from secretions. The ants go into a frenzy whenever something tries to eat the tree or brushes by it, and viciously sting whatever disturbs the peace. The wren, therefore, carefully constructs its nest in the tree, forcing any would-be egg thief to have to go through a swarm of angry stinging insects to get the eggs. Far north of these tropical dry forests in the Sonoran Desert of Arizona, a close relative of the rufous-backed wren has its own medieval way of keeping predators from messing with its clutch. The cactus wren is the largest wren north of the Mexican border. The habitat here is what appears to be a forest of cacti, defending their precious water reserves with spines. This makes cactus an unfriendly mass of spines that most animals, especially egg thieves, dare not climb. The giant saguaro is one cactus used by the wrens, but the wrens are not usually alone. Many other birds use these giants to house their well-protected nests. Gila woodpeckers drill holes in these giants to raise their own young, and when they move out, other species will use these well-defended cavities, such as the tiny elf owl. Perhaps the favorite cactus of the cactus wren, however, is the choya, which can look almost fuzzy with all the barbed spines covering the plant. They are famous for detaching entire parts of the plant when an animal makes contact, leading to one species being known as the jumping cactus. A cactus wren nest is safe in the middle of an impenetrable castle made of spines, and the nestlings will grow up with little worry in the middle of the brutal desert. If you enjoyed learning about the extreme lengths parent wrens will go to, why don't you take a look at my entire bird playlist where you will meet many other amazing groups of birds, like the dancing mannequins of the Neotropics, or learn how amazing woodpeckers really are. On this channel, I strive to create quality miniature documentaries and educational videos on biology and conservation, and hope to inspire outdoor exploration and conservation action. Thank you for checking this video out, and until next time, bye.